G'day, it's Chris Betcher here. And in this video, I want to talk to you about managing and creating and working with users inside the Google Admin uh, Console. So I'll click here on the Users module uh, from admin.google.com, and it takes us into this page here where all of our users are stored. Now, a user in terms of this is uh, anyone who's in your school domain, so teachers, students, anyone at all who's a member of your domain. And of course, we talked in a previous video about organizational units and organizational structure. And you can see here that I have my OU structure on the side here. So for example, I've divided it up into school and staff and within uh, students and so on. So I've got all these different categories. And the idea is you put users into a specific category because later on we want to apply particular properties so we can actually give different groups of students different access to different things. So this is the user list on the side here. You can see I'm seeing all the users here in this list. I have the option to view users from a specific organizational unit. So if I'll just click that one there and say, if I go to the top level, I've got all my admins in the top level and so on. If I go into one of these student OUs, you can see I've got uh, a group there with all the students from that particular uh, year group and so on. So the idea is to manage your users in organizational units. Now, how do you create a user? Well, there's a button at the top here that says add new user. And if I click that, you can see I can go in here. I can give a name, first name, surname, an email address, which organizational unit they belong to, um, in any other information. I don't need that there. Um, and uh, down the bottom here, you can either automatically generate a password for them. And if you do that, then they'll be asked to change that at their first sign in. Or you can turn that off and you can actually just assign a password to them um, and choose whether you want them to have to then change it or not. So those are the settings for creating a new user pretty straightforward. In a school situation, you're more likely to want to import uh, a group of users in bulk rather than one at a time. So the way you do that here is you have this option to bulk upload users. And it's asking here for attaching a CSV file, a comma separated value file, which is a type of spreadsheet. Um, and the easiest way to set this up is if you click this link here, it will download a template for you, which you can then uh, open up in your spreadsheet program, Google Sheets or whatever it is you use, and you can then uh, add your information and export it out as a CSV file. Now, I've got a little example here. So here's just a very small uh, list with a few dummy users or sample users, I should say. Uh, and you can see what I've got here is their first name, last name, the email address I'd like them to use, uh, the password they're going to use here, and uh, also the um, the organizational unit path. So in this case, they're going into from the root, they're going to the My School Students Year 9. So if I go back to the admin console, I'll just cancel that for a second, you'll see I do have an OU here called Year 9, and currently there is nobody in this OU. So what I'd like to do is import this group of students into this OU. So the way you do that, uh, in Google Sheets, of course, you can go to the File menu and you can download and export that as a CSV file, which I've already done. So if I come back here and import my bulk users now, I can say Attach a CSV file. And here it is right here, the sample users file that I actually got from that spreadsheet I just showed you. When I say Open and Upload, it's now going to take that list of, uh, I think it was six users, and import them in. You can see it's working away in the top here. It'll process. Now, depending on how many you have, it can take a little while. I've only got six, so it was pretty quick, and that's now done. Now, it doesn't always show up straight away. Sometimes it takes a few moments to just uh, appear in this list. So usually if I just switch to a different group and then switch back to it. Oh, maybe I can just refresh the page. Let's do that. That will speed it up. And now if I go back to my school and students and year nine, you'll see there is the list of students that I just imported in. Uh, and it's brought in their first name, last name, email address, uh, and their password um, is all set for them. So they're all good to go. Now, once you have a user in the system, let me just move this aside for a second. Once you have a user in the system, as you hover over their name, you get various options to manage them. So for example, reset a password. If a student comes to you and says, I forgot my password, it's a simple matter to press this reset button here that brings up this dialog box and you can um, generate a new password for them. You can rename the user if they've you know, had, a, had, a, had a name change for some reason. Uh, you can also add them 
two specific groups, which we'll talk about in another video. And under here, you have the option to email that user directly, suspend them if you need to sort of stop their access temporarily, uh, delete the user, or change the organizational unit. You can move them to another OU. So for example, if a student is in year nine and you need to move them into year 10 or whatever it might be, you can simply click on the change org unit and simply just move me out of the way, just pick another OU for them to go into. So maybe this one here and hit continue and it will move them from one OU to the other. I won't actually do that right now. So that's how you manage uh, the users in terms of uh, adding them, um, controlling some of the things like resetting their password. And of course, the other thing you may want to do occasionally is to delete a user. So let's say uh, Alan Turing here, I need to get rid of this student for whatever reason, he's left the school. Uh, what I can do is tick that student's name, go to the more button up here and say delete selected users. Now, if you delete a user, obviously if it's a user that's created some content, maybe they own some Google Docs and they've created some videos or content or whatever it might be as part of their account, the question then becomes what happens to their information when you delete the user? Particularly important if it's a staff member and a staff member's uh, created a bunch of uh, resources that the rest of the staff might be using, what happens to those? Well, the best solution is uh, shared drives, but that aside, let's just say they have some things in their account. When you go to delete, you have the option to transfer ownership of this data to another user. So, for example, if the user has some drives and docs or calendar information or some brand account information, so let's say I don't want that, I don't need their calendar, but I do need their drive and docs. Um, yes, I'll include any files that haven't actually been shared with anyone else. And then I transfer them to a new user. So maybe, um, uh, I think I had a Marvin Minsky here somewhere. There you go. So I'll add that in. And so the stuff that used to belong to Alan Turing will now be moved to Marvin Minsky. When I delete that user, the transfer has started and they'll, don't, they'll let me know once that's complete. So there you go. That is uh, probably in a nutshell, everything you need to know there about managing users. Make sure they go into the correct OUs. Uh, you can bring them in one at a 